Alright, g'day everyone. We're uh, just jumped on the bike and about to do a uh, another day of food delivery. Just going to be on Uber Eats today. Um, I was going to log on to Menu Log, but um, they didn't have any slots available, so bugger it. I got I will do a Menu Log in the next few days. But how do you like that, eh? Number one, a little celebration there. Number two, I've just smashed my previous best day by a hundred bucks, or oh, 99. Um, the other night, Sunday night, 576 bucks. Fuck me dead. Whew, I, man, I couldn't believe it when I, this is what happened, I hit the, uh, I thought, you know, I went out, but I'll hit the first bonus pretty easily because I had 15 to go on the Sunday, so. Well, yeah, that'll be half a day's work Sunday. And then uh, Sunday night, it um, actually started getting really busy, which it did the same did the same last week as well. So I thought I'll stay out and do a couple more and end up doing another 15 more. So got the extra bonus, the second level bonus, which I just showed you there. So yeah, woohoo! That's a uh, that's a very high bar to to have set though, so I doubt I'll ever beat that. Good job. And uh, yeah, as I said, that was uh, it's a little celebration. I hope you like that. That the uh, horn and the song there. That song goes back to the 80s, 80s or 90s, 80s or early 90s by a band called Rose Tattoo. Uh, the song's called Bound for Glory. If any of you are um, interested in checking it out on YouTube. And we've got a quick question for you all. In what sport do Australia's mighty ruse play? I'll, um, I'll leave that there with you. I might tell you later on. You might want to uh, jump on Google now and see if you can get the answer. The Mighty Ruse. I'll give you a slight clue. They're a men's team and they play in a winter sport. You've got a bit of a uh, nickname. Nickname Mighty Ruse is kind of alright, but I think it could do better. Super Ruse maybe. Um, riding ruse. <laughs> anyway, I'm just rambling on now. Um, but yeah, for today, I'll leave that. Uh, I'll leave that question with you, and I'll uh, tell you in a while. Tell you in a while the answer. There might be a bit of a clue with that celebration. If any of you follow this sport overseas. Because not, not many people actually follow the sport here in Australia, which is quite surprising. Um, but yeah, anyone anyway, to today. Just about to head to Birkenhead Point and uh, get some snacks for the day. Haven't logged on yet, so. Um, because today is the day I uh, do my Manly Ferry trip, which I've been promising for months now. <laughs> I thought, you know, it's nearly end of October. So, um, yeah, so I thought, I literally woke up this morning and said, fuck it, you know, looks like been a reasonably sunny day. But it did get a little bit of rain this morning, so I thought, yeah, fuck it, I'll jump on, jump on the bike, make a video of uh, trip to Manly. And hopefully get a few orders over there as well, you know. But as I said, yeah, for now I'm just going to stop at Birkenhead Point. Might log on when I get there. I'll just see. Do a couple of orders. Head towards the city as usual. Um, then when I get to the city, I might might do one or two there. Then I head to Circular Quay, jump on the ferry, and I'll head over to Manly, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you all uh, at some stage then. Alrighty, to leave Birkenhead Point. I'll um, 
give you all a quick clue. Another quick clue as to the uh, answer to the question I asked you earlier. There's currently a player, an Aussie player, the first ever Aussie player playing this sport at the top level, which is pretty much the top level around the world. Um, his name is Nathan Walker. I believe he won the championship with the team he was at back in, I think it was 2019, from memory. Um, and uh, he was recently in a uh, clip on YouTube getting into an absolute belter of a fight with an oppo opposing player. Um, which is something all Aussies like to do, so it doesn't really give you much of a clue, but if you know the name Nathan Walker, I think you'll be uh, pretty sure what sport the Australian Mighty Moves play in. Anyway, I'll, uh, while I was in there at Birkenhead, I got uh, two quick orders. I got uh, one from good old Turkish Gazlem House. Um, and she actually had my uh, my profile pick up on the screen, you know, the little screen where they, had, where they received the orders. Oh, that's a very handsome pick of you, you know. I can't, I can't make it out because you've got all the mask on and everything. Make, make you out now because you the mask on and everything. But, oh, it's a very handsome pick of you. Oh, thank you, I said, you know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it was nice to start the day with a compliment. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that was the first order. Grab that. Now we're off to Empanada's factory, which is uh, just the top of Victoria Road at Balmain. Oh, not Balmain, sorry, more Roselle. And we're taking one order to Birch Grove, which is just down that way. And the second one a little bit further than Birch Grove, but it's actually technically still Birch Grove. So we're going pretty deep into uh, Birch Grove. Um, deliver these two orders. Then I might do one or two around uh, in the Balmain Roselle area, we'll see. And then I'll start heading to the city. But anyway, I'm going to keep you guessing what the, uh, what the sport the Australian Mighty Roos play in. Catch you all in a bit. Okay, I'll, uh, I might kill the suspense. The uh, sport that the Mighty Roos play in, I represent Australia in is actually ice hockey believe it or not yes we do have a national ice hockey team <laughs> um see so yeah, i've been and yeah where i got the idea for the little celebration before was i've been watching um ice hockey goal horns on youtube all the different teams both in the nhl which is the top level and uh the lower level ones i think it was the american hockey league the next one down um, and there are some pretty cool ones out there. Favourite one's the New York Rangers one, but I also like the uh, Chicago Wolves. That's a cool one as well. And as you can see, a fair few places have got the Halloween decorations up. And there was a really good one I saw when I was coming down here just a minute ago. I'll, um, I'll show you that and chat about it in a sec. It's a creative one there, yeah. Yeah, let's say today, 25th, 24th or 25th, today, here we are. Poor fella, must have, he's obviously a West Tigers fan, must have hung himself after we lost was 80 to 6 or something against the Melbourne Storm. And he's been hanging there ever since. <laughs> uh, it's a very upped decoration, that one, I like that. It's got to be my favourite Halloween decoration so far. Um, but yeah, for those of you that don't know, the West Tigers absolutely shit out this year. Got the wooden spoon and got spanked 80 to 6, I think it was, by the Melbourne Storm in one of the last few rounds. So, yeah, not going good for them. Um, as I said there, yeah, that's probably a fan that got fed up. Hung himself after that, uh, that defeat and he's been hanging there ever since. With all seriousness, if you guys have got mental health issues or whatever, go and get them sorted out. 
get yourselves fixed and uh, once you're fixed, get on a bike and do a breeze. We'll cheer up pretty quickly. Anyway, I've just done those uh, first two deliveries of the day down here in Birchgrove. Come out to more Roselle now, this is Darling Street just up here. The main street that runs between Roselle, which is up to my right, and Balmain, Balmain East, which is down to my left. I'm, uh, what I might do, it's not a little surprise I'll, uh, I'll give you all. A little bit further down this street, so I might stay on this street and start heading to the city. Don't worry about doing any deliveries in Balmain today, because we've got, uh, sort of going to go for Manly today, so I'll, uh, just have a bit of battery and a bit of leg power for over there. But I'll, um, I'll show you this next little surprise in a second, down the bottom of this street. Bet you can't guess what it is. said in my previous video this road that I'm on now on a Sunday Sunday so it doesn't look like they've done anything about improving the in and out of the building the traffic or whatever so with Balmain being a pretty sort of well to do area should we say have a lot of people coming down there on the weekend um, doing renovations to the house or buying a new wheelbarrow or even just going down there for a sausage sandwich which is what they're probably most famous for because some of the hardware you buy there is a little bit dodgy um, so yeah Bunnings now open in uh, Roselle that's on Mullins Street on Mullins and Roberts Street so uh, right, yeah get down there and have a uh, sausage sandwich on the weekend Anyway, I'll uh, shut up now and I'll head across to, uh, head to head to the city and then maybe to Manly. We'll see how we go in the city. Coming up ahead here is a uh, little problem we have here in Sydney at the moment. It hasn't really been addressed too much by the media, but Uber have started, well, they've partnered with mine and they've got their next iteration of bikes out. And look where someone has just left this fucking bike. How would you fucking ride a bike to here, dump it here, leave it in the fucking way of the bike park? I mean, yeah, granted, I can ride easily around it, no problem. But why and who would fucking ride a bike to here, leave it here, and then walk the rest of the way to wherever they're going? There's fucking nowhere here. Maybe they live in an apartment here, they've got to walk all the way home. Maybe they walk from the Piedmont or the city. Where the fuck are they going? Mine and Uber, please fucking clean this shit up. It's giving all our cyclists a bad name. This bike's Rizzo, APF XCT, has been dumped here. Find the fucking last bastard that used it. Find him 250, 500 bucks. And then people might actually get the point and leave them in areas where they're out of, out of the way and not blocking paths and roads and things. It's disgusting. Something like that would be okay. Leaving a bike there is okay, I guess. But again, I query. Who the fuck buys a bike and leaves it in the middle of the fucking bike lane back there and then walks the rest of the way back? Or wherever they're going. That's got what got me wound up. Fucking this cunt. Look at him getting off. He's getting off up there. Probably fucking him, the bastard. Son of a bitch. No. Uh, is, look, he's leaving in a good spot there. Okay, fine. But you, are you seriously hiring a fucking bike, riding it to there, dumping it there, then maybe getting a bus to the city on another day, getting a bike from the city back there, and look, we have a fucking another one here too. Jesus fucking Christ. That is blocking the footpath, that one. People cannot walk through there. Oh, they can, but you know what I'm saying? That's disgusting. 
And there's another company's bike over there, Beam, B-E-A-M. I don't believe those ones have registrations. But look, people just leave them fucking everywhere, all over the footpath. It gives us all a bad name. Oh, that has got a registration, AE462. Beam, sort your shit out. Ah, oh, man. That really winds me up. It's this whole thing of not owning anything and not giving a fuck about it, which is what a lot of Aussies do. They just dump shit anyway. And look, dump car there. That car's been there for months. Own your stuff, look after your stuff. Whether it be a bike, a car, a pet, a fucking house, maybe, whatever. Forget this fucking you'll own nothing and be happy bullshit. The fucking World Economic Forum are trying to bring in. Anyway, I'll leave it there for now. <laughs> I'll come down a bit and I'll come back to you in a while. Anyway guys, yeah, I'll just, uh, just come down a bit. I'll just jump online, coming through Piermont here. And I've pretty much straight away got an order for uh, going from Fishbowl at, on Kent Street, going down to Barangaroo. So I thought, yeah, may as well do that one. Um, nice, uh, nice easy one. I'm going to get out of the way. That one's paying about six or seven bucks for memory. Um, but yeah, what else has been happening? Uh, my bike. Um, had an issue with the bearings, which is inside the motor. Um, the bearings were actually crunching against the shaft, which is what I, which is what the bike shop found when I opened it all up. I didn't want to open it up myself and have a look. It would be a bit funny. But um, yeah, that only costs... Well, that, that, the bearing thing only costs about a hundred bucks to fix. While I was in there, I got the um, brakes done as well, which that was um, that was close to a hundred as well. So if it's two two hundred bucks, motor's now beautiful, um, new bearings and whatever. So yeah. Um, not only that, another little bike update. The battery that I'm using today, um, I've actually had upgraded recently as well that cost 600 bucks that was done by a company out at Chippy Norton which is out past Bankstown Airport the name of the company's Premier Batteries and what they did they uh, they basically rebuilt the battery for me put in new Samsung 18650 battery cells and Subsequently, my bike is, or the bat that particular battery has gone from being an 11 amp hour battery to a 14 amp hour battery. Which what that means is, I can get a couple of more hours out of it. A couple of hours more use out of it, which is pretty cool. Um, obviously the voltage stays the same. That's 36 volt. And yeah, I looked it all up online and everything. It's the sort of thing you do when your battery comes to the end of its life and you want to, you know, obviously as opposed to buying a new battery, which sometimes you may not be able to do because the particular battery shape you have might not be on sale anymore. You might have an older bike or something, but in any case, or even if you just want to upgrade and get more more sort of usage out of your um, motor go and get your uh, battery upgraded and Samsung cells are probably like the best you can buy at the moment so uh, yeah very happy with that and I, as I said it was done I uh, did that about two three weeks ago it took the guy about a week to do it because he's obviously got other jobs than that and he actually they, they actually do batteries for mobility scooters um, and those sort of power wheelchairs and all that sort of thing so they've been doing that since about 1999 so they know what they're doing they're no cowboys so well that's a pretty good uh, that's, that's all right um, that's a pretty good thing they do another one neuron I won't get started though <laughs> um, yeah so yeah that's Premier Batteries out at Chipping Norton which is just past Bankstown Airport um, Bankstown Airport, of course, for those who may not know, it's just a very small airport. They only have, uh, well, very small planes, you know, sort of, uh, 
um, Cessna type light, light aircraft out there. Cessna, some helicopters landing out there. Um, there's quite, quite a few businesses out there I noticed as well. So you can, you can actually ride a bike. There's a bike path going through the airport and you just sort of see all the little planes coming in. It's kind of cool, I might, I might do that one day. Ride all the way out there and uh, ride through Bankstown Airport. But uh, well maybe not. We'll see. And uh, speaking of uh, Bankstown as well, I actually sold a couple of, men of the old menu log bags I had too. Sold them for 30 bucks each. One bloke was out near Bankstown there. Um, so I did that on a different day. Another guy was just around the corner from where I live at Ashford. So, g'day to you two fellas if you're watching, and I hope you're uh, hope you're enjoying the bags and making lots of money with them. Anyway, I might head off to Kent Street now, get this one done, and uh, come back to you in a bit. City. I just picked up another one after that uh, fish doll one. It's actually going down to the Peak. So we'll uh, go down to Pitt Street. So I'll do this one, then we'll uh, pick up on the ferry. This one's pick up from uh, Nando's back there. I was nearly not going to do it because they normally take ages to do, but um, they seemed to have a few members of staff on there, so I thought I'll do it. And, and yeah, sure enough, it was a couple of minute wave wasn't too bad so yeah as I said we'll uh, get down to Pitt Street now then on the Circular Quay across the Manly. Alrighty guys it's now uh, 10 to 2 we're down to Circular Quay and we're heading down to Wharf 3 to jump on the Manly Ferry that comes in about 10 minutes. Um, so we've got about a 10 minute wait here I'll tap on over there, right there. So this is the sort of ferry that I'll be getting on. It's about a 12 or 14 kilometre trip up the harbour. Um, yeah, I'll get some footage of the trip for you all as well. I'll uh, just go and tap on here and um, catch us all in a bit. to a guy that was working either at the, at the I think he was at the terminal that time that I delivered to um, it was a bug of a place to get to but uh, yeah that was down at White Bay near Balmain um, uh, yeah Ooh. here's the front of the freshwater Manly Ferry Fre freshwater actually been a suburb up past Manly up on the north side so Anyway, I might close off for a bit, shut up, and uh, I'll catch you all on the trip. Fun jackets are located under your seats and in clearly marked storage sections near the entrance doors and the front of the vessel. <laughs> in the event of an Sorry, emergency, follow instructions of the crew. Smoking and vaping is not permitted anywhere on board the vessel. Thank you for your cooperation.
I'm going to go on all day. And that, gee, you know, how many does that hold? About 3,000 people? That one's only a 3,000, 3 to 5,000, I think. So. Yeah, as I said, we've got double decker here. Double decker ferry up us, we're on. Where we're heading, I'll, I'll whack a little map up now where we're heading. Heading up out to the right there, we go all the way out and just around there and then around then we get to Manly. Looks like the, uh, that's the, those black boats there, they're the, well, the uh, New South Wales version of the SWAT team, I'm not sure. Or the SWAT team or the Army. One of the two anyway. Look at those little, little boats. We're looking out for Chinese or Russians. <laughs> I won't go there. Yeah, further up the harbour that way is sort of to the west. That's the direction where I live, round to the left. And then up there is sort of North Sydney and uh, just over with a prominence of it's Kirribilli, that's the one. Kirribilli is sort of just over there too.
cruise for the day, myself, my brothers and my mum. And uh, one of my brothers gets really seasick. <laughs> they went around handing out all the seasick tablets and he's still got sick and he's sick as a dog. That was hilarious.
across about eight bucks. Eight bucks to get get across here. Seven, eight bucks, something like that. So 14, 15, 16 bucks all together here and back. Fun. Oh my god, it's chat tight here. Should have gone straight away, we're going to be sure. <laughs> Didn't know that it's chat tight here. Here, you've got this here for what I'm last time I was here. Very busy here too. Look at that. Oh, I'm busy. Oh my god, that. This place would be actually a gold one. <laughs> This is Manly Wolf. See, and that's the Corso just down there. That leads to Manly Beach. What I might do is... Uh, let's see. We'll go, down, we'll go across the four points there, just across the road there. Um, right out past there. And then we'll get actually... Uh, yeah, down there and come back up the course, so I think we'll do that. Yeah, this is the uh, Four Pines Brewery, just come out here on the left. Been there a couple of times. If you want to come over for the day, come on to up. Uh, oh, I think that's another nice restaurant there. Through here on the bike. <laughs> uh, that's only during school times, the 30k limit. When uh, school's in there, there's school over there, yeah, school just there. So, if you're ever down here, take note of that 30k, 30 kilometers an hour speed limit when the uh, kids are go going to and from school. It's fucking crazy. I thought 40 was bad, but I live far out. <laughs> Head down to uh, Manly Beach now, I think. This is called Corsa. You basically come from back there. And, uh, oh, you got a fish bowl up here. Jeez, a few places. It'll be pretty popular, I reckon. Just going to do a quick, uh, quick trip down to Manly Beach and, um, might log on then and do a few deliveries if we if we can get a couple. I haven't seen any um any other food deliveries around here. Rip 
dancing that around they uh, feel close. So now going for a swim today. Nah, you don't want me to go for a swim, do you? You don't want to see me in my fudgy smugglers. It doesn't look it doesn't look that waves don't look that big, but um I think yeah, as I said, I think it's probably a few rips out there. Which can sort of happen manly, so But there will inevitably be some fans that will go out and take a surfboard out later this afternoon, jump on their surfboards and go surfing. There's quite a bit of sea spray in the air you can see as well. And the Pacific Hotel, what? I think they used to be called something else. The used to be Novotel or something. November coming up. Big shout out to uh, Wilson over in uh, Los Angeles. He's running that. He's done it the last couple of years. Thought I may as well jump in and um, jump in and have a crack this year. So what that is, starting 31st of October. Um, to sign up and try and work as much as you can, earn as much as you can in the basically in the month of November. I think he's going to start it on the, uh, I think he said 31st of October and finish in early December, which is when it's sort of a five week period, but it's, it lines up with the new breeds and Dordash and many of the pay dates. So it'll be an even sort of, even five weeks to pay. So, and it's five weeks to, you know, allow you to have a bit of a day off here and there. 
so they don't kill yourself down the zoo. Okay, this is the uh, far end of Manly Beach here. You've got Queenscliff Beach a bit further up there. It's only sort of a smaller, smaller sort of beach. I don't think we'll go that far up. We'll, um, I might turn around here and jump back onto Uber, head back down, jump back onto Uber and see if we can get a uh, Guzman or a fish bottle or two. Alright, it catches on a bit. I don't, I don't think I did a uh, score update earlier either. I'm uh, currently on 27 bucks. That's from all the deliveries I did back in the city. I've just, just logged on now, so I'll pocket may as well. It's nearly 3pm, 3, 3 so... Um, I'm going to try and maybe do a couple here, I'm not, not going to hang around here too long, I'm going to get back to the city for uh, before, try and avoid the peak hour, either before, or I might have to head back after the peak hour, where um, all the commuters are getting on and off the ferry, so, yeah. I'm through, oh, heading, heading back down to also in um, the wharf where all the uh, where all those restaurants were I dare say we should get we should get one or two. Probably head up in the back streets there. The deliveries. And funnily enough as I was as I was turning the camera on, I just went past the food delivery right there. Of course I'll stand corrected, this pathway is a uh, shared bike and walking pathway so I stand corrected on that one from before. Learn, learn the surf schools there. Higher boards and that. I've never actually surfed in my life and I'm a bit worried about learning to because me being as laid back as I am, I'd probably say, you know, fuck it, just go around the struggle surfing for the whole year or something. Oh, you've got run up here too, okay, that's new. Never knew that. But this is actually, uh, this area, I think, is, I'm pretty sure it's where Sand, which is Sand or Volley, one of the two. I'm pretty sure one of them started in the northern beaches up here. Um, I think it might be the one that collapsed a couple of months ago. Anyway, yeah, they, so they definitely do have uh, food delivery up here, so... Come on Uber, give me some love. Anyway, I'll uh, log off for now and head back down the wharf and um, hopefully get a couple. Right, we'll just get our first one uh, from Little Vet Kitchen, which I dare say is somewhere around here. I'm going to have to check the uh, map on for this one. I've got no idea where that is. It's just a small, uh, small little $5 one, so I dare say it won't be going too far. Um, Time me to go here, hang on a second. I think it's left here, might be up, up this way, I think, but it looks like it. Yeah, first of the day for uh, Manly, so we'll jump on and uh, glad we got this one. It's looking pretty quiet there, <laughs> so uh, it's West Esplanade, so we're just down here to the right. Okay, I'll um. Can pick this one up and uh, catch you when I'm done. Okay, guys, looks like the uh, day's going to be cut short, shorter than I was planning anyway. With a nice storm coming, I might just get back to the city and uh, ride the storm out. There's nothing much after it, so um, yeah, <laughs> bit of fun for later on. Just waiting here for the uh, first mail to be picked up. Can't yeah, be ready soon, so I'll uh, just turn it off. Get it done. Alrighty guys, off we go. For well, this one we're heading up Pitwater Road. So I'm, I'm sort of glad we got uh, going down up Pitwater Road. We get to show you um, the road sort of heading in a northerly sort of direction. And that, that road takes you up to that Pitwater Road takes you up to sort of freshwater all the Northern beaches, what they call northern beaches, a little bit to the north. It's mainly sort of the first one you hit when you come across the harbour. 
and then to see you got DY, Curl Curl, Freshwater, um, a whole lot of beaches further up that way. So uh, this one's very start of Kidwater uh, Road, so we won't go to any of those beaches or anything. But um, yeah, I think I so. We may even get one or two orders from along Kidwater Road. There's a, there's a few uh, restaurants up there as well. There's also Macca's and a few other fast food places. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Heading up Kidwater right now. Oh, that one's all done. And I uh, just got a. Uh, then got some friendly groceries so which is a shame I had to knock it back is Seafall's sort of a little far from here and it's up a massive hill I'll go past the hill and I'll show you it's just down here to the right you sort of go up this massive hill Sydney Sydney Road man it is an absolute motherfucker to to get up in a car or on a motorbike let alone on an e-bike um, so yeah I knocked that one back unfortunately it would have been a decent one to do but yeah um, yeah, but as I said, first one done. Nice easy place to find. Straight up Pitwater Road. Another happy customer. Anyway, let's see if we can get another one or two and uh, head back to the city. Boys and girls in blue. Harder work. Harder work or hardly working. Maybe we should go uh, picking up some donuts. Uh, but I'll show you that Sydney Road now that I was talking about as well. It, um, it do actually doesn't look too bad, but it's just a long distance to sort of go uphill. If you get that car with the battery on, it'd be a kind of nightmare. I'll go and show you this hill, Sydney Road here, see what you all reckon. In normal circumstances I reckon I could do it, but I don't want to waste too much battery at the moment, so. This is it just here on the left, Sydney Road. And funny enough, if you sort of go up, if you continue along it, you go to Seaforth, but if you head left, where the, uh, where a bridge, near where a bridge called the Spit Bridge is, you sort of go around to the left and you go around and you go through there, you go to North Sydney and obviously then out from North Sydney back to the city via the Harbour Bridge so uh, yeah, I don't think we'll do that today anyway, see if we can get a couple more and uh, head back to town I think we head back to, um, head back to the city now I think I've just knocked back another one which is from up GY which I was saying is a fair way up Pitwater Road um, so yeah, it's pretty quiet sort of around this area, but it um, seems to be okay, as I said, further up Pitwater Road and also got one there in uh, Seaforth, so a little bit far for what we want to do today. Normally, like normal circumstances, I'd consider doing the Seaforth one, DY one, yeah, maybe from where we are to get there, pick them up and then deliver them and get back to the city today is too much, so is it bugger it? <laughs> That's nothing. Also, uh, got my entry today for the $160 million Powerball draw, which is coming up on Thursday night. See, I think it was 80 last week and didn't go off, so. I think it was 60 million or 80 million last week and yeah, didn't go off. Jeez, I think 160 million is the biggest it's ever been. It's a record, so. Man, I'll be happy with a tenth of that, 16 million. <laughs> I'll share 160 million bucks 10 ways for sure. So yeah, just gonna head down to the wharf now and back to the city I think. It's getting a bit quiet here. Anyway, we uh, got to do one. A bit of a look around, show you guys a little, little bit of manly. Um, won't get down to the, the quarantine station, that's down that way, it's a bit, again, it's, it's sort of, could almost do it, but because it's 3 o'clock, 3.30 now, it's starting to get a bit late, and I want to try and avoid the uh, commuter ferries, and I want to be able to just jump on the ferry, we've got plenty of room, 
it's not a shit quite for that so yeah so we'll uh, head back to the city now and um, get a couple more in there Sort of hitting more, sort of down between sort of Bankstown and Sutherland now, and Sydney, which is just here, has missed out on the storm. I'm just going to get the tiniest, lightest bit of rain. It's going to assist for about, as I said, about an hour or so, and then the sun will be out after then. So, uh, so you what, I think I might log on now. It's only going to be very light rain. So yeah, it looks like dodge a bullet there. <laughs> I might uh, log on here and. Um, See how we go. My uh, thoughts on Manly, pretty, pretty impressive. Fair bit of potential there. What are we going to do? Look on an Express World Square down to Redfern. Yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Um, yeah, but my uh, my thoughts on Manly, I'd say um, that's uh, definitely uh, definitely would head over there again. But I'd probably do it just before lunch or just before um, dinner. You got some. Places there that I reckon would be absolutely busy as because a lot of, as you saw, there's a lot of unit blocks and uh, apartments and that um, all along the Stein there, and also a bit further back along Pitwater Road and all that sort of thing. So, a very flat area, um, a lot of apartments and a lot of restaurants there that people would order from. So, it'd definitely be worth um, maybe doing half a shift there or even, even a full. Full shift, full, din uh, full uh, lunch and dinner shift there maybe one day. So who knows in the future? Um, might head over there, give it a crack. But uh, today, yeah, today was just like a chilled out back finding mission, seeing what it's like. Reconnaissance, as they say, in the uh, army, I believe. Yeah, for now, as I said, just got, uh, oh, actually, a double. 
going from uh, Glory Dreams City Central Plaza um, and then picking up from Liquorland World Express as well and well Liquorland Express World Square I should say and heading down to Redfern which is pretty much straight down there so I'll get these babies done and hopefully won't get too wet it's only going to be light rain so it should be fine and I'll uh, catch you all in a bit just uh, just had to cancel that um, Liquorland one so I checked out what the order was and it was um, eight cans so it's two four packs uh, and the other one's a coffee and a croissant so that probably won't end well so that's that's sort of using your brain and part of keeping your 100% satisfaction record intact see if I'd have taken that the coffee and the croissant would have been absolutely smashed in the bag by the cans so I've, I've cancelled the cans you just pick up the uh, coffee and the croissant deliver that so yeah and uh, yeah so I'm picking that up from uh, Gloria Jean's coffee it's a coffee chain here in Sydney much like the American Starbucks um, that's down on 450 George Street so not too much further from here Last one to uh, Surrey Hills. Yes, from CBD to Surrey Hills for a copy. <laughs> I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, but uh, yeah, now we're heading down to down the Redfern here, Waterloo, Waterloo area. Picking up here, and I think think it's going back that direction. It might be up there. I'm not sure, but um, this will actually be a good spot to be tonight. It's now 5 p.m. This can be pretty busy at dinner time down here, so. Should get a couple more down here and uh, make a good night of it, I reckon. Alright, this is all the, uh, the start of the peak hour traffic. Coming from the city, heading down south. The city, this is the city, kind of red turn. This traffic here, so we're heading to down there and going right. So it's uh, probably heading to Erskineville Way. Um, I guess so if, if we hang around here, we'll probably get a few. And this one, but I just picked one up from um, just got a order at Broadway, which is what it is. You all know, you'll you know, I like to call that one my goose and lace golden eggs. It's a $12 order coming back just not far from here, so I thought, why not? Because uh, big out means we'll most likely get a double at Broadway as well. So, as I said, that one's 12 bucks. So, by the time we get there, if the double comes in pay say seven bucks we can uh, get a double and maybe earn around the twenty dollar mark for the two it's actually not a bad little trip either soccer too yeah currently uh, playing a little five-a-side comp oh, yeah five-a-side sorry I keep calling it point six a side boxing uh, we won our first game two weeks ago that was 4-1 and we lost last week 5-1 um, I'm actually not doing too badly in goals I'm doing a little bit better than I thought I was and I like to playing five a side in this comp especially I like to sort of push up a bit not just stand between the sticks but sort of push up and actually be like a fifth man for the team you know give the teammates an option to pass to that can really help uh, if they're having trouble scoring goals which is um, sort of the way in this comp because the goals are a little bit small like the goals are sort of a little bit narrower and um, sort of higher than what I expected so so yeah, it's good fun after a um, half a day's work on a Wednesday. Go there and play soccer. So. And tomorrow night, I think the game tomorrow night will most likely win, but it will, might be a close one. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, going to uh, pick this one up at uh, Broadway. 
and hopefully, hopefully it'll become a double. Yeah, that, uh, that message just came through. It wasn't actually from anyone. I oh, know it was actually from DoorDash saying, I'm now eligible on DoorDash to uh, deliver alcohol from Coles Liquor. So, and they sort of sent the whole, you know, make sure you only lift one box at a time. But I'm like, fuck, really? I've been delivering alcohol with Uber for fucking a year. <laughs> but they don't know that. Anyway. What I thought I might bring in as well is a, uh, I might do a little Q&A so the audience can get to know me just a little bit better. Um, first question I'll ask myself, Mac is or KFC? I'd say I prefer Mac is to eat, by far I haven't had KFC for ages. Um, but I do prefer to deliver to KFC because KFC now have actually turned right around and they're actually really quick at getting the orders out. Uh, so I think they've um, KFC has got the message, so answer that one. Mac is to eat, KFC to deliver. Anyway, I'm going to pick this one up and uh, do a couple more questions later on. In the uh, shopping center here is getting into the whole Halloween spirit. that one up and uh, thought I'll do the uh, second question of the Q&A while we're on the way. Decent old rod. We've got uh, next one up is my most used emoji. Kind of a young one. <laughs> The emoji I use the most would probably be either the thumbs up or the laughing. But I am also a big, big fan of the middle finger emoji. This one. Um, I use that quite often, but yeah, most used ones probably laughing or uh, thumbs up. We'll do another one later and uh, get this one off to our Redfern now. Funnily enough though, I didn't actually get a double, I managed to go up two flights of, uh, well not two flights of stairs, two floors up at, Redfern, at uh, Broadway Shopping Centre, had a piss, still didn't get a double, didn't get a second order, which is quite bizarre, but I think it might be just a little bit too early to get a, uh, to be getting doubles, didn't really seem that busy there, so. When I get half an hour back there, I think it will be. Anyway, off to uh, Redfern. I think it's Redfern or Waterloo. Waterloo. Waterloo we're going to. I'll catch you in a bit. Right, just down here at uh, Zetland. Just picked up from a place called Oliver Brown, which is like a kind of like a chocolate or dessert sort of place, you know, do coffees and but they have you know especially chocolates it's, if any of you know uh max brenner i think it's max brenner something something similar to what they do um and yeah picking up and uh, taking it back to uh redfern pretty much pretty much where we were <laughs> so uh yeah nice order um I thought I'd do the third question, Q&A. Now? If I can bloody remember it. Yes, that's what it was. Last meal I cooked. The last meal I actually chopped food up and put stuff in and put on the stove and everything like properly cooked like that it was about it was about three years ago now parents were um, overseas on a cruise and I also had the house myself for a couple of weeks and yeah that's the last time I cooked what did I cook? I cooked the most random thing I cooked it's like a Thai thing I had rice 
and not just cutting up anything. I had beans, carrots, put some olive oil in there, a bit of rice that is, so, and with the vegetables that I fried. Um, and yeah, as I said, it was all pretty, pretty random and hodgepodge thrown together with whatever I had in the house, and it yeah, came up pretty good, I must say. So uh, yeah, that's the last thing I cook. Anyway, let's head over to uh, Redfern and get this one done. So. I was really going to say something I like being in the way, but <laughs> it wasn't really in the way, but it kind of shouldn't be where it was. Anyway, anyway, yeah, over to Redfern. question I know you all want an answer to my celebrity look alike who does now look like he's a sportsman of course <laughs> um, and I would say he's currently the best tennis player in the world some people might disagree his name is Novak Djokovic. Controversial, yes, but what's he won? Seven or eight or nine Australian Open titles. Countless other Grand Slams. Yeah, let's have a look at this. Henderson Road. Yeah, fucking let's do it. Ah, uh, yeah, so Novak Djokovic is my celebrity look like. I get that quite a bit. I've been to the tennis a few times, but haven't, haven't, unfortunately I haven't been mistaken for him by any uh, good looking ladies. You never know. <laughs> Maybe one day. And I can say to them, yes, I am, I am him. Nah, that's probably a bad, really, really poor impression. Um, the only thing is he's got, he's got lighter eyes, he's got like greeny eyes, and I've got full brown eyes, so... Um, that's the only thing, but uh, in the face and that, I, I must say, I must admit, there is a very, um, very strong similarity there in the face. Oh, and also, I could say the hair as well, but my hair is currently in a subtle mohawk style, so who knows, you might, might see me, might see my, my mohawk and decide, hey, you know. It's copy Neil. Novak Djokovic, if you're watching, give yourself a mohawk. Anyway, that's, that's that question out of the way. I might uh, go and pick these two up because they uh, well, look, look like they're just around the corner from each other, so it shouldn't be too difficult. And then we head bomb back down this way and then across to uh, Everly, which is behind good old Broadway. So. At Broadway, probably in about half an hour, an hour. It's now 20 past seven, and I have done 14 orders and earned 97 dollars. So these these two will take me well past the hundred dollar mark. Should be pretty sweet. So yeah, let's go and get these two done. Next question. What do I do? Have I got any pets? Yes, I've got one pet. Pet cat, her name's Laura. It's funny because the uh, last delivery I just did, the person's name is Laura. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, I'll do the pet question. Um, yeah, I've got a pet cat. We've always had cats. Um, I think this would be our, more, my 
fourth pack we're on to. We had uh, oh, two growing up that sort of when I was sort of really young. Uh, we got those, and uh, they were pretty funny names. <laughs> Socks and Kitty. Kitty because she was a kid when we found her in the street. And Socks because she had white feet so she, it's like we had, she had white socks. Um, the next kid after that was Junior. Who she had a very young, she was very young at heart so I'll fucking I call her Junior. Passed away as well. So that's three cats now. Yeah, brother bought Laura home when she was about eight weeks old. Um, said, "Oh yeah, mum needs another cat." So like, okay. Um, and so yeah, we uh, we're on to Laura now. She is now ten years old. I think. I think she must be ten years old. All right. Time goes by. Um, yeah, we got her in 2012. She's she's very healthy. Uh, she's got a few little minor sort of health issues over the years, but but um, generally she's pretty healthy. She's so sort of happy. She loves me. Uh, I'm about the only one in the house she actually um, sort of actually goes to when I arrive home. She'll come up say hello and everything so yeah but um on the pet front yeah I love dogs as you probably seen a couple of my videos I like you know coming all the dogs that we sort of go past that we see yeah, good fun. But, um, yeah parents won't allow dogs so yeah no dogs cats aren't in our house at the moment uh what else have we got what other question so I get my notes out. Pets. Ah, oh, yeah, hidden talent. Did I say hidden talents? No, I haven't done hidden talents yet. Hidden talents. Besides killing it at the food delivery game. Um, hidden talent is I'm actually a pretty good swimmer. When I was young, um, I sort of trained twice a week, two nights a week. I yeah, trained twice a week and then. Um, when I was about 13, 14, I started to sort of want to sort of test myself against other sort of kids, you know, like in competition and that. Um, so I um, said, oh, mum, you know, can I go in like races and stuff? She said, yeah, okay, no problem. Little did I know that actually involved getting up at 5 a.m. in the fucking morning to go to go swimming, swim in one race and go home and have a shower and enjoy the rest of the day. I was like... What the fuck is this? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, at the age of 14 on my birthday, I had to get up at 5 a.m. to go in one swimming race, I think. In that race, I came third or fourth. It lasted all of about 30 seconds. And I was just like, what the fuck? I was like, what the fuck? You know, why, why would you do that? Um... So yeah, I sort of decided to end my swimming career there. Career, if you like training. Um, ended it there when I was 14 and stuck with soccer. Um, funnily enough, did pretty well at soccer as well. So hidden talents besides food delivery, of course, swimming and soccer. Anyway, let's get this uh, this next one delivered. Look at that chopper out. Chopper, of course, being Kelsey slang word for helicopter. It looks like it's a police chopper, and it looks like the direction we're headed in. <laughs> we're sort of circling above there. Next sort is going down to Henderson Road at uh, Alexandria. So. Could have something interesting to record down there. Ah, I doubt it. Uh, what used to be the um, train, sort 
train workshops down near the back of Redfern Station. Very, very old buildings here. Not sure what they're doing with them now. Some of them are sort of offices and uh, some of the supermarket, IGA. Ooh, big one. Jeez, bigger than I thought. You'd have seen the IGA from the other side. Yeah. You know, it's that big. Yeah, there are all sorts of random shops and stuff down here. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, as I said, we're heading down to Henderson Road, just down behind these buildings for the uh, next delivery, which is an Angry Tony's Pizza, which is from back that way, towards Broadway. Oh shit, tell me I can get through here. Tell me I can get Tell me I can get through here. Oh you son of a bitch, what the fuck? No, I've come too far down. Fuck. Motherfucker. Anyway. Come too far down. Anyway. Now, as I was saying, yeah. Old railway workshops from like hundred years ago or something. Uh, there's actually a lot of there's more new offices gone in behind there as well, like high-rise office towers. There's a Commonwealth Bank. We've got an office there. I don't know why. Probably just to buy the property, I guess, and uh, sell it when they collapse eventually. Yeah. yeah. restaurants picked up from down here before there's a fish bowl and a, there's another Thai restaurant I'm not sure can't quite remember the name of it it's along here as well you can sometimes get nice little pickups from here let me see this fucking map where are we going along central should we go down here because that leads straight down to Henderson Road I believe and yeah, it's the edge of the park. Turn so. left, onto Henderson Road. left. What? You've got to be fucking kidding me, man. Come on. These maps are useless. You fucking turn right at Henderson Road and it's right there on the corner. God, these maps are unbelievable. Seriously. Anyway, I'll uh, get this one delivered and uh, come back to you in a while. Here's a funny story for you. This uh, last drop off here, I actually dropped it on this side of the road. But um, actually, I actually went to the back part of the pub there to say, oh, you know, is this this address? You know, because the map had the pin there. And the guy oh, no, you know, it's a pub or whatever. But okay. So I jumped over the other side of the road there and uh, messaged the fella say, you know, I'm here, you know, the place over there is all dark, closed and everything, what's going on? Um, he, oh, you know, I'm over here, how you going, mate? You know, I heard this voice behind me, turn around, this guy walking out of the pub. Okay, you know, so are you, do you want me to drop it over there for you, or here? What's the guy goes on, huh? He says, you know, I'm just having a drink in the pub there, and I'm going to try and sneak it in and see how I go. <laughs> So he's ordered a pizza there, they always have food at the pub there, he's trying to sneak the food in, so he's had me drop it across the road there so he can just sort of sneak in without letting the pub know. I said, mate, it should be fine, most pubs, most pubs in, a, in Sydney are like that, they, they, most pubs don't give a shit, you know. Um, yeah, that's funny story, anyway, we've got one, uh, one here going to Redfern Fish and Chips, which is just straight up this street here. I've been there a fair few times, he's a good bloke there, Redfern Fish and Chips. Don't know his name, he's always a nice fella. G'day if you're watching. <laughs> so uh, we're going to bash on there and head up to uh, Redfern. Okay, just picked up from uh, Redfern Fish and Chips here. We're heading down to Darlington, uh, which is, uh, as I said before, it was one of the deliveries earlier that I thought was going down that way. It's the back of Broadway, so I'll um, deliver that one and uh, head down to Broadway, see if we can get 
a uh, popcorn order from Voice or something. <laughs> Now the next next question what are my biggest and smallest deliveries? Let's start with the smallest. The smallest one I've ever done was literally a bunch of coriander. Like I think you know how coriander comes, do you? It's like a like a herb, a little stick. Thing and with the herby bits going at the top or whatever. I didn't actually see the actual size of it because it was wrapped up in a um, IGA bag, but yeah, there's a bunch, bunch of coriander. She, um, chick must have um, forgot it when she was doing her shopping or whatever. She's going left here, fuck what am I doing? Yeah, she must have forgot it when she was shopping earlier in the day and but shit, she needed, might have needed it for cooking dinner or something, so jumped on the Uber Eats and uh, ordered it through IGA supermarket <laughs> and it popped up on my screen I was like what the fuck it? a bunch of coriander but sweet I'll deliver it <laughs> doesn't worry me and it was just uh, in Balmain too area not far from where I live and the biggest biggest delivery I'd have to say the biggest one that I've ever done it's Oh, it's sort of close between the case of beer and a five kilo bag of ice and I think there were four or five bottles of uh, uh, soft drinks like 1.25 litre bottle of soft drinks so I think they were both pretty similar in weight um, the ice and the soft drinks took up more room in the bag but um, yeah, so the weight was, I think they were about equal. So it's either a case of beer or the, um, the five kilo bag of ice, a couple of bottles of soft drink were the biggest deliveries I've done. Not quite sure because I did them a fair way apart from each other, so I wasn't sure, couldn't really tell which was heavier, but. So yeah, that's the smallest and the biggest deliveries that I've done. Anyway, onwards to the uh, Sydney Uni Regiment building to get this one dropped off. Alrighty, just uh, dropped that one off. We've got a quick fire double going from Newtown down to Piermont. So, uh, yeah, we'll come down to Newtown here Tuesday night. Don't think it'll be that busy. It'll be pretty quiet. It's what's it, 8 8.30? Oh, geez, 8.30 pm now. Busy time flying, eh? Been in the red room. Redfern Alexandria for quite a while, eh? So, uh, yeah, pick these two up and um, head on back down that way to Piermont. Okay, last two Q&As before uh, we finish up. Just on, uh, just after 9pm, 9.15 to be exact. Um, and, yeah, things have gone a bit quiet, so I may as well start heading home. Now the first question, have I got any tats or piercings? No, I've got none. Would I get any? Most likely not. Not really my style, I guess. And the last one, craziest childhood injury I had. I, um, happened when I was about 10 years old. We were playing bull rush with tips in the school playground. And up one side, or what, two sides that had brick walls, and I'll run out there. So, uh, running down one side, and the okay, the uh, so as I was so rudely interrupted by my uh, camera battery running out there. Craziest childhood injury was uh, when I was about, as I said, about 10 years old, um, I was running, playing bull rush, running down the side of where there was a, uh, a brick wall on the uh, school playground, primary school, back at St. Mark's, which I actually got that in the video. I think it was my last video. Um, anyway, yeah, running down the side, trying to avoid getting tipped. The bloke ran from the other side and he was, he was running full belt, I was running full belt. Nearly made it, but he got me right in the corner. And the force of him sort of tipping me, like, 
push me off into the uh, brick wall. So yeah, head first into the brick wall. Cushion. Week off school. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the funniest part of the whole um, story, I guess, was I went to the medical center after it all happened. Yeah. Went back into class, the teacher would see I was a bit groggy and all that sort of thing, and uh, she said, oh, I'll go to the principal's office. Went to the principal's office, they called my mum. Mum came and picked me up, and um, yeah, so she took me to the medical center, mum. And the doctor said, asked me a few questions, said, oh, what time did it happen? I said, oh, happened at recess, happened about 11 past 20. No, you didn't hear, no, you didn't hear a mistake there. I did say, to the doctor, it happened about 11 past 20. And he, <laughs> he goes to me, yeah, mate, you're definitely concussed. Have a couple of days off school. Yes. Um, yeah, it was pretty, uh, sort of think of it, pretty serious injury. Pretty sort of scary. Don't have that when you're a kid, but um, the good thing is your brain's sort of probably not fully formed by then, so you pretty easily sort of recover from it. Um, is that night they um, they said to my parents, wake me up every every four hours or so while I'm asleep, just to make sure I don't slip into a coma or anything. Um, but yeah, I didn't did sort of slip into a coma or anything like that. I, um, as I said, I was groggy, definitely groggy. Um, sort of grogginess lasted sort of two or three days. Um, yeah, said I managed to get the whole week off school, so. Um, went back and everyone said, like, oh, you're still alive? So I said, yeah, I'm still alive. You know, it's just knocking the head. So, um, yeah, that's my craziest childhood injury. Um, might um, finish up there. Say a uh, quick shout-out to, uh, speaking of injuries, quick shout-out to Yogi Steve over in the USA. He's in uh, Los Angeles. He's recently come off his scooter um, while he was delivering and broken his, I think he said it was his clavicle and his sort of his collarbone somewhere up there um, very unfortunate for him, poor fella um, hope you get well soon Steve, and uh, what I'll do I'll, um, I'll put a link up to the uh, to the GoFundMe thing he's got up, he's sort of set up, but um, they've actually raised quite a bit of money to go towards his, um, his medical costs over there um, he'll be out of action for a few months, but um by the, by the looks of it, he's doing well. He's sort of recovering pretty well. He, um, from, from what he said, I thought, oh shit, you know, like, man, but yeah, he's, his sort of recovery's been going well. He's a pretty, he's a pretty fit, healthy bloke as well. A bit like myself. Um, so yeah, he'll, um, I think he'll make a pretty good recovery by the looks of it, um, the way he's recovering at the moment. So keep your chin up, Steve. Um, it's not like, you, not like you to get down or anything. You're still, you know. <laughs> The uh, amazing Yogi Steve. So keep uh, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, hopefully you come good in time. And as I said, I put a link to his GoFundMe in the uh, probably at the bottom of the screen there, or in, and also in the uh, description of my video as well. So if anyone wants to uh, donate, if they haven't already, or if they want to again, I'm not again too. Um, yeah, you, you use that link, the GoFundMe link, to uh, donate to. His uh, medical costs, which are around about 20,000 US, which is fucking 40,000 Aussie. It's a fucking lot of money, man. Um, but yeah, their medical costs over there are insane. Um, anyhow, yeah, donate to Steve if you can. And uh, Steve, get better soon, mate. Um, and now, you know, I'm sort of just to uh, finish up today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed my uh, trip over to Manly. Um, Delivery-wise, was a little disappointing. We only got the one delivery over there. Um, but, you know, not the end of the world. I just, I'm more to do, as I said, do it as a reconnaissance sort of mission, just have a look at the place. There's a few new restaurants popped up there, which is good. Um, I might go over there and do like a sort of couple of hours or a whole day shift over there, maybe, um, and just sort of see how it is in future um but yeah thanks thanks all for watching thank you for all the uh 15 subscribers i've got so far 
Um, yeah, as I said, I don't, don't really do it for likes and shares and subscribes and all that. I just do it to inform you guys. And speaking of uh, informing you guys, if you guys have got any questions, like the real Q&A type questions I did earlier, um, if you guys have got any questions you want me to answer in future videos, mate, fire away. Plug them into the, uh, plug them into the comments below and I'll, um, I'll do my best to answer them. Yeah, I'll definitely answer them. Alrighty, signing off for the day and night. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.